Hello, I am Lana and um, I teach spin classes here in the Verde Valley um, at the Camp Verde Rec Department and also um, I'm looking forward to teaching classes um, at Emerald Waves um, and I wanted to go through what to look for in a spin class, um, how to set up your bike, okay, and um, I'll give some tips on how you can do cardio drills at home with any piece of equipment during this video as well, but I am gonna concentrate on the spin bike and setup um, and safety. So you know um, what to look for in a class if you're out of state or whatever, can't come to my class. So um, the first thing you start with is the seat of the bike, okay? The seat of the bike, you want to line up your hip bone, okay? The top of your hip bone with the top of the seat. Obviously my bike is already set up for me, okay? And righty tighty, lefty loosey. All right, so if I had to raise or lower it, I would turn it to the left, pull the pin out, and raise or lower the seat. All right, I suggest people starting their handlebars in a high position. So if they're already high, if you're new, um, just make sure, if you're new, that's a good place to start, just make sure they're tightened all the way in and that the pin is in place because sometimes people will loosen them to adjust after class and then there can be like too much movement, okay? So just make sure it's nice and tight. Now, if you are an experienced cycler, cycle is about your body creating power to get stronger and to burn calories. It's really that simple. Power equals calories burned equals a raised metabolism equals also building muscle, okay? Power. That's why this piece of equipment and these classes, people are burning between four and 700 calories per class. I've been teaching cycle since the late 90s. Yes, I was three years old when I started. Um, but this has been the most effective tool to keep me in shape, and um, this has always been the go-to for people um, to get in, in shape. So. If you are more experienced and you want to create more of a workout and make your body work harder and generate more power, you can lower these. But let me talk to you about what needs to happen. In the meantime, you have to keep integrity in your core, okay? So you can lower it as long as you don't collapse through here, okay? So comfort first until you get used to it. Now that I'm on the bike, and whenever somebody new starts my class, I have to tell them to put their foot in the six o'clock position. Uh, it's always confusing for new people, and I apologize about that. They kind of look at me like, where's the six o'clock? And they kind of do one of these, and I'm like, stop, 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 stop. Right there, six o'clock position. You want a bend in the knee, okay? About 25 to 35 um, degree angle. I have no idea what that is. I don't math, okay? I don't geometry. I don't any of that stuff, but a little bit of a bend in the knee, okay? So a little bit of a bend in the knee. And then you want to think about your body positions when you get onto the bike, okay? As long as, and the other thing that you can do to tell whether or not you are where you need to be is your booty's not moving. If you have to reach to get your foot all the way down, you're not, you need to do something with your bike seat, normally lift it, um, excuse me, lower it. So, um, and if you're feeling pain in the knee, it's likely you need to raise it a little bit. Um, in a three o'clock position here, the knee should be over the ball of the foot while the foot is flat but not past the toes. So this is the perfect position for little old me. Okay, the three o'clock position. Three and seven o'clock is where most of the work is done. So three o'clock here, quad, 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 hamstring, 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 glute. Okay, oops, I almost fell arena toe. Don't be me, keep your feet flat. So that's where most of the power is gonna be. And that's what you really want to think about is push, 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 little bit of pull. Okay, that's it. Body positions is really simple, okay? And we're not dancing on this thing, all right? Um, and I'll go over that a little bit more later in just a second. But 
Doing anything on the bicycle here that you don't do outdoors is a contraindication, okay? That's not my idea. That's professional um, training that I've gotten. Um, you can Google it yourself, all right? Um, so we're not doing push-ups, we're not voguing, you know what I mean? We're, um, we're pedaling because anything else you do on the bike is going to take away from putting power into it so you can get that four five six hundred calorie burn Me. <laughs> the baby's right behind my camera if you can hear that um anything you do on the bike is going to take away from that power and that calorie burn Me. and being on the bike is going to take, take um take away from any upper body workout you're trying to do so it's better to separate the two all right i like to multitask I'm okay with half-assing a lot of things, but not your workout, all right? So flat feet, my core is, the shirt's kind of loose, my core is, has integrity, okay? Body positioning, you can have your hands here, you can have your hands out. Some instructors um, do go through class and say, you know, wide hands, close hands, totally fine. Um, but when you get to getting out of the bike, there is a couple different positions. You're gonna keep your feet flat, okay? Booty over pedals. Booty over pedals. Position one. Position two is booty over seat. Okay. And that to me is more comfortable with wider hands. The booty over seat, is gonna use more, of course, booty muscle, okay? So, um, here is your resistance knob. We work off of a rate of perceived exertion most times, um, in most classes. There are no numbers on this knob. Perceived, your perception of how hard you're working, it's a one through 10 scale. One, two, three is warm up and cool down. You're only gonna see that warm up and cool down. Four, five, and six, that should feel like you are taking a walk with your really cool in shape aunt after Thanksgiving dinner. Um, so you feel like you're working, but you feel like you could maintain it for 40 to 50 minutes before you're gonna get really tired. Working, but it's not gonna make you tired very soon. Seven and eight on the bike means, and um, when I say seven and eight, again, there's no numbers. You are adjusting this yourself. Nobody touches this but you, okay? Your neighbor doesn't touch it, your instructor doesn't touch it, and as instructors, we're all trained not to touch um, people's resistance knobs because each bike is a little different, and it can go from easy to hard really fast, and I definitely don't want a beginner on this bike and need to turn it a little bit and have them feel like it's really difficult and then be encouraging them to keep up with the movement. I can't feel it, so it is up to you, okay? Um, seven and eight should feel like you're going upstairs two at a time. All right. If I ask you a question, you should be able to give me a two to a three word answer. That's it. All right. You should be out of breath and you should feel like you're working. Shouldn't those drills shouldn't go for more than, I don't know. I'm guessing here, which isn't necessarily good. Um, you're not going to do three songs in a row with a continue seven, six, seven and eight, okay? You're gonna have little breaks and stuff like that. Nine and 10, here's the other important thing. You should not be able to do nine and 10, and, and now this time I'm not guessing. Um, you should not do nine or 10 for more than two minutes at a time without a break, okay? So if you go to a class and the instructor's like, we're gonna do nine, we're gonna do nine for half an hour. Dial it back to like a six and then bring it up to a nine, all right? Um, and I know there's a lot of really well-meaning instructors out there. There's a lot of competition right now um, as this has become a really, really uh, popular boutique as well as large gym format sport. But nine and ten, no more than two minutes. Now, here's an advanced tip. If you're watching the clock, yes, I... If I waited to do this stuff so all the kids were gone and everything was perfect, nothing would ever, would ever happen. So that's the baby playing with the dog. Um, if you are working at nine or 10 
and you go into your um, recovery phase. So they say, you know, drop the gear and go down to a four or five and recover. Look at the clock or your stopwatch or whatever. It should take between 15 to 30 seconds for your heart rate to start coming down. Okay, if you've truly worked at a nine or 10. Okay, so um, some hints on doing this at home. If you have a bike or any other piece of cardio equipment, 30 seconds at nine or 10, a minute and a half at four or five. So you're doing 30 seconds of extremely hard work, a minute and a half of recovery, active recovery, so you're still working, minimum of eight times with a two minute warm up, a two minute cool down, and then stretch for two to three minutes, all right? And that outline will work for a spin bike, that'll work for a treadmill, that'll work for an elliptical, that'll work for, you know, the heel toe express if you're just out to, outside walking, okay? Um, so stay healthy. I can't wait to see you guys in class as soon as possible. Um, this is the second video I did and the other one, the baby was all over it. I guess he got tired of it. So, all right, well, I will see you guys really soon.